Yep, just for you guys as an Android user, I've switched to the iPhone 11 to properly review the phone as my daily driver, so keep watching. Hey, what's up guys? Adam Lobo here and you're watching Adam Lobo TV. If you guys are new, Hello and welcome. Do consider subscribing to my channel as I release videos at least twice a week, sometimes three times a week if I'm free. And if you're returning as a subscriber, welcome back my friends. Now let's first unbox the phone. Now the phone comes with a white box as usual, with the visuals of the phone, with the exact color choice of the phone on the outside. Then at the back, you'll find some of the storage space and also what comes inside of the box. Opening the box, you will see the phone inside. Underneath, you'll find a little white card sleeve which has the user manual, the SIM ejector pin and some stickers over there. Then below, you'll find the AirPods with the lightning connector since the phone does not come with a headphones jack. Now the phone also comes with a 5W charger. Yeah, a measly 5W charger where it wasn't there when I shot this unboxing. So was the lightning to USB cable. But yes, it comes with that. Now going over to the phone specs, the iPhone 11 comes with the 813 Bionic chipset with Apple's 4-core graphics GPU. It comes in three variants for you guys to choose from with 4 gigs of RAM with IDES 64, 128 and 256 gigs of storage and it comes shipped with the brand new iOS 13. Now going into the color finishes, it comes with six colors for you guys to choose from. The one which I have is called purple. And then there's white, black, green, yellow and product red, where the colors was more pastel-like compared to the solid colors for the iPhone XR. Now looking at the design and build, using the phone as my daily driver felt solid, but I can immediately tell that this is an outdated phone in 2019. Now it is surely heavier than other mid-range phones that I have tested and it has a front and back glass with the aluminium frames at the sides. And yes, since the design is not refreshed, you will find that huge notch in front and then there's also a medium-sized camera bump, but it is still shaky if you put the phone down on the surface and try to type it on. Now instead of just one camera lens like the iPhone XR, there are now two kitchen stoves, I mean lenses, arranged in a vertical position towards the left side of the phone. Now there's still no in-display fingerprint sensor, not even a physical one at the back as they now claim they have a faster face ID which I gotta agree during my test. But this still means that if you have your phone on a table placed like this, you still need to lean over like this, only then you will get it unlocked. Now as for the phone's spots and buttons, looking down below there is the lightning port. Yep, it's still there. With one of the stereo speakers towards the right hand side and the other speaker is on the earpiece. Then on the left there is the alert switch which I'm still a fan of. Like the OnePlus phones with the volume rockers down below. And then on the right, there's the power button and the SIM ejector slot which unfortunately only supports up to a single SIM. Now as for the phone screen, it has a 6.1 inch liquid retina display which is Apple's fancy name of LCD. But to be completely honest, I did not find any issues looking at the screen even at its lower resolution of 8 to 8 by 1792 pixels using the phone on my daily usage. But yes, what really annoyed me is that huge notch in front which still makes it distracting when watching videos on YouTube and Netflix as well. Now as for the phone's camera specs, there are two cameras as I mentioned earlier. One is a 12 megapixel f1.8 26mm wide lens and a 12 megapixel f2.4 13mm ultra wide lens. And yes, these are the two same cameras that you would find in the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pro Max but just two lenses instead of three. Now with the iOS 13, there's an improved camera app. Firstly, the shutter button is faster compared to before. Then there's an area where it darkens, which shows that the ultra wide angle lens can cover within your shot so you can switch it accordingly. Now the pictures look great, especially with the main lens. 
where it was indeed nicer compared to the previous generation with excellent dynamic range and image details, especially during back or direct lighting condition under daylight. Now again, the portrait mode for iOS devices still kind of annoys me within the app where you need to get a bit further or even in front to make sure that you get the right angle for the portrait mode shots. But again, the portrait mode shots is still a hit or miss as you guys can see. But once you finally get a shot, you can actually change the background blur just like what Samsung had since the Note 8. Yep, the Note 8. Now it's nice to know that the iPhone 11 has the addition of the wide angle camera but due to its higher aperture of f2.4 compared to the f1.8 on the main lens, you will get a lower quality images under low lighting conditions. And the edges seems to be just a bit more distorted, look way more curved than usual compared to the likes of the wide angle lens on phones like the Vivo, Huawei and Samsung which look way better. And there was a slight color temperature shift on the wide lens compared to the main lens as well. Then finally, there's the night mode where again, the main lens look way better than the ultra wide angle lens for the night shots as apparently there is no night mode on the ultra wide angle lens. But for me, I still prefer a dedicated night mode instead of turning it on automatically because it's nice to have the option to turn it on or off. Then as for the front camera, it comes with a 12 megapixel f2.2 aperture. Now when it comes to the selfie shots, to my surprise, I've been seeing so many mind-blowing photos online. But the selfie shots were 50-50 for me, where there were times where the pictures looked nice and there were times where the shots looked just okay, as you guys can see. Now the portrait mode shots were great, especially if the lighting situation is on your side and I love the fact that you can adjust the bokeh and the shallow depth of field for the front camera before or after taking a shot. Now as for video, the rear camera records up to UHD 2160 up to 60 frames per second and 1080p up to 120 frames per second where the videos look nice at 4K resolution. And although there's no optical image stabilization for the ultra wide angle lens, the shots still look pretty stabilized and the video shots for the main lens also look almost gimbal like which makes the phone great in the video department. Now as for the front, it records up to UHD 2160 up to 60 frames per second with a decent image stabilization when recording video for the front facing camera. And here's also a sound sample on the audio recording on the phone so you can be the judge. So this is the front camera's video stabilization and also the audio test for you guys to know whether or not this could be usable for your vlog or even your Instagram stories when using it on portrait mode as well. Oh, you're waiting for the slow fee? Okay, here it is. Now as for the phone's speaker quality, the speaker did sound great with Dolby Atmos sound with stereo speakers, one down below and the other on the earpiece as I mentioned earlier. Now the overall clarity was great and had a great bass to it and here's a quick sound test. Now as for the phone software, it is shipped with the latest iOS 13. Now one huge issue that I had on the phone, which I still think should be improved, is when I used the phone for a long time, even sometimes a shorter period of time, it became really hot even when I was setting up the phone. So hopefully a latest software update can fix that. Now having tested so many phones before, I think that iOS should also do something about swiping from on top to go to the notification settings as I find it pretty hard to use it with one hand where other Android phones allow you to swipe from the middle of the screen and of course a better customization would also be a welcome feature. Now I understand that this is a personal preference but this is how exactly I feel. Now onto the phone's battery, like I mentioned in my video relating to what Apple did not tell you in the phone, the phone only comes with 3110mAh of battery and based on my tests, 
using the phone as my daily driver with true tone display on i only got a total of three hours and 41 minutes of screen on time at 10 percent battery which clearly shows size does matter when it comes to the battery and yes as i mentioned the whole chipset and software to battery optimization and performance still comes down to the size of the battery where you can charge your phone from 0 to 50% for about 28 minutes which was nice but again it is still a small size battery now as for gaming playing games like asphalt 9 was good and pretty smooth however if you're into games like pubg you will be disappointed to know that the notch on the left blocks out some information during the whole gameplay so keep that in mind so i hope the next software update can fix this problem now in conclusion the iphone 11 is indeed the best value iphone out right now with just the right amount of specs having two lenses instead of one like the iphone 10r with a newer chipset i would say that this would be a better choice so if you guys really really love the apple ecosystem and just can't let go then go with this phone but for me with a price of 3399 ringgit for the lowest 4 gigs of ram with 64 gigs of storage i just don't think that it is a value for money phone compared to many other android smartphones out right now where you can get so much more paying that kind of money all right guys with this do let me know what you guys think of the brand new iphone 11 at the comment section below would you guys get it and if you're an android user would you guys switch to this iphone do let me know down below aside from that thank you so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up like share and subscribe to adam lobo tv if you haven't done so don't forget to hit the bell icon just next to it to get notified for my future videos thank you so much for watching this is adam lobo and i'll catch you guys in my next video